Farming families have come from all over the world and set down roots in the San Joaquin Valley. They have all found a vast landscape that is at once bountiful and unforgiving. The key to unlocking that difference is water. As drought, climate change, and now groundwater restrictions crimp access to water, things are changing. What will that mean for the future of the valley? Can small farmers still make a living? We talk to family farmers who are determined to try. The small farmer is a vital part of this civilization. If we go, then so go your civilization. They explain how they and their families came to the valley, what they've made here, what the future holds, and the role of water through it all. I was told to get an education, you know, and get away from farming because of the attachment to slavery, you know, you didn't get paid. Sometimes that when it's in your DNA, you'll come back to it. But the small farmer, we might end up being an entity that's going to be extinct. We're losing a lot of them now. But I think that we are running out of time in order to build up some equity. You know, we need to look at that. If not, then, you know, what is the use? So some people like the, you know, the, the green, some prefer the red. Red is supposed to be, a, you know, a little hotter. My family, we came to California in 19, August of 1952, and we left uh, Idabel, Oklahoma. Came out here looking for the streets that was paved with gold, trees that had dollar bills on it, you know. So we were surprised to come out here and that to find cotton had already beat us in California. So we started, naturally we did uh, farm work to survive. Finished high school, went a couple years at junior college drafted into the Army, but I volunteered for the Navy instead and did almost five years during the Vietnam War as a submarine sailor. I was an electronic technician. And then 1973, we, we bought this and that's when I started into the farming, went back to farming. Never was able to get into the end of the farmer's market. They was closed to me. Well, it, it was uh, discrimination, you know, is that they didn't want you. It's, it's like land, you know. If you know the history of California, you know, I mean, California has a history that's, to me, worse than what Mississippi or Alabama. Uh, they had just as many Jim Crow laws on the books as that the back the South had. African Americans, we played a tremendous role in the investment of this country. And it was probably due to the, the food system. We still has a part to play because we have to eat and you should be part of the process. And our mission is this, is that we have to participate in this food system because food is important, it's vital. I contend this is that the probably next crisis we have will be concerning food. Not only the quality of the food, but also the availability of food. Out of the 80 to 100,000 uh, farmers in California, the American farm makes up uh, maybe a little over 500. That's less than a half a percent, and that's ridiculous. You know, I mean, we are, we, 
we played a major part in the advancement of this country, you know, through our labor and through farming. You know, why is, is our number in California do dismal? And it goes back to them Jim Crow laws. And we're still doing some of the same things that people did before us. You know, we got some shames in this country that people try to they think they, it'll go away. It's not going to go away. Matter of fact, it's even uh, it's, it's, it's getting more embedded, you know. But I, I think that I'm optimistic the fact is that we have enough good people saying that, okay, enough is enough. So this is the, uh, the submersible well. It's a seven and a half horsepower. You know, it gives me more than enough water to uh, to farm here. We had to go deeper. Huh? This this is down about 300 feet. Well, you know, California's been in a drought situation for the last 15 to 20 years. You know, we've been busy taking out of the, the ground, but we haven't put in, in place anything back because we rely mostly on Mother Nature to do that. You know, and I don't think we've really been proactive as far as, you know, the combating the problem, but my wells went dry, you know, the uh, water table dropped. So if you're a farmer and you don't have water, you're not a farmer, you know, you're just a landowner with a payment due at the end of the month. So it, you know, it's, it affects you. It put a lot of people out, temporarily out of farming, some of them permanently, you know, because you have no water. But it's a situation that we're trying to deal with. For me, I guess I was kind of fortunate or blessed. There was another small farmer named Paul Buxman. He called me up after they, you know, they, they ran an article in the paper about the dilemma I had. And he uh, came up with the idea that he put on a campaign for wheel, you know, and he did that. And we raised enough money that I could put to replace the domestic well and also repair the existing ag well, you know. Uh, to a certain degree, you know, and that really, uh, you know, got me back into the uh, farming business. And then later I was able to uh, acquire a grant to put in uh, a new ag well. So at this point I got, you know, I should have, I have sufficient water. But each year, you know, you have to go deeper because the aquifer is not being replenished by Mother Nature or by us. Right now we're located at uh, Telegraph and 46th Street, and I come to uh, Oakland in the Bay Area uh, the second and the fourth Saturday of each month. I try to share the uh, opportunity up here with other farmers in the, in the area, so I do it twice a month. Oh, yeah. oh, they are, they are, they are. The small farmer is a vital part of this civilization. If we go, then so go your civilization. I'm getting up in age now is that, you know, it really is that I have an apprentice that I'm training. Also, I'm getting involved with uh, the schools, especially some of the charter schools. They're bringing the kids over uh, once, once a week. And they can either, you know, uh, help me plant or they can help me weed or they can do some of the other things that, uh, you know, that's pertaining to uh, the growing of food. And eventually, you know, with a little more help, I hope to convert this five acres into something like a little demonstration site so that young kids can come out and see what we're doing, you know, and they can participate in it. Because they're the one that's gonna have to replace me. And if we can present it to him a way that they can not only make money, but also they get some satisfaction. It's just that they don't have the history. You know, you need to know history in order for you to deal with the future. I'm working with them uh, so that you know, we can take it to the next stage.